So everyone here knows Dragon Ball. We don't have to pretend that we don't. We all know Dragon Ball here. Everyone has watched it grown up or we've tried to get into it at a later date. And if you try to get into it at a later date, I fucking feel sorry for you because that shit is difficult to get into. Today we're going to talk about why I think Dragon Ball is overrated, which is a massive claim because everyone always says, oh, this is the best, this is, you know, well, I don't think that, I really don't, and I'm going to po point out a few things, it's probably not going to be enough to convince you, on my opinion, but I don't care. Number one, we're going to talk about some character development, mainly I'm going to focus on Goku here, because I generally can't, I've been sitting here for like 20 minutes trying to think of character development for Goku, and I, I just can't. It's kind of the same shit over and over again. Goku sees a stronger enemy. Oh, he's stronger. I want to fight him. Goku gets, of course, stronger. Because he's the main character. He's, of course, going to be stronger. I'm fine with that. Point where it's like, um, not a new form every time. But when it's an enemy that's, let's say, in a sense, much stronger than Goku. Goku won't lose. You know, he won't lose. He'd either just somehow win. Or he gets a new form. And don't get me wrong, it's always hype when he does get a new form. But that's not because invested to into his character. It, it's because even though I do think Dragon Ball is overrated, I the animation it's not it's nothing like we have now, like Dra uh, Demon Slayer or any of those. But the animation is really good. I do like it, and the, there is a lot of interesting in the story sort of. But come, when it comes to Goku's actual character, I think of it. I mean. The only noticeable ca like character development is Vegeta, and that <laughs> and like don't get me wrong, that character development that's good. I I do like that. That's good. Still, he's still the the bad boy if you want to say it right, but he still acts the same as any other character. With Vegeta, he he acts exactly the same to anyone as he's kind of always d uh, have. But when it comes to Bulma, he also acts the same to her, but when she's in danger, when she gets hurt, there we go. Then he completely changes, because change, and I did like that. So Vegeta has better character development than I've seen in Dragon Ball. I can't think of anyone else. Hero Goku, uh, what the fuck's going on there? Because I don't know. Second point I'm going to talk about, cop-outs. Yeah, you heard me, cop-outs in the show. So... In the show, there hasn't been any real, like, meaningful deaths, if that makes sense. Goku dies, okay, well, he, he can literally just come back. Anyway, yay, oh, so good. Listen, I, you know, it's, it's stupid in my opinion that they have that. They can just keep re-summoning or re-wishing Goku back if he dies. And I, it, it, it just feels like a cop-out to me. That if any of the like characters die, they can just wish him back. To a point where, let's say a character has a meaningful death, which will never happen. If a character has a meaningful death, oh, yay, people will actually like it, right? Because it's meaningful. It's actually like, it's meaningful death. And then they just wish him back. And then what? And then it's just, it's just lost. All of the meaningful death. So yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly don't think the wishing should be like a thing, right? Because why? Like, don't be afraid to kill off characters. Don't be afraid to kill off characters to make a scene more impactful or more meaningful, right? Like, just imagine. The <laughs> I wouldn't say the hype. But let's say one of the like main characters die, like Krillin, which he has big on his back, yeah. But if he actually died, for real, but it was in like a, a meaningful slash sacrifice way, in a way, people, people could like that, right? People could like that, it could be good for the show. But, no, we're not going to see that because they're just going to get wished back. The main thing I want to talk about, the main thing I want to talk about in this video is... The actual patience says the fights, but it come kind of fits in with the patient. So, the patient. I've never seen the original Dragon Ball, the Kid Dragon Ball or Kid Goku. 
I finished in Dragon Ball Z and further from that. The pacing, first of all, what the moment a fight takes over nine thousand episodes to to finish is a is a clear sign that the show has shit pacing. And it's a meme, everyone knows this meme. Not the over 9,000 million, but the pacing. Everyone always like, oh, when it takes 50, 50 episodes, four to five. But I, I didn't know how long the freezer fight was, but it was definitely over 20 episodes, and that should not be the case. It should be maximum, I don't know, let's say eight. Let's see if it was eight episodes. Okay, it's, you know, that could be fine. But it was, it was like over 20, 30 episodes, probably. They took, I mean, the entire freeze, uh, freezer saga. I don't know how long that was, but let's say 50 episodes, right? I assume it's like 40, 50 episodes for the Freezer Saga. Yeah, we got some fights, but there was nothing that stuck out except Goku versus Fruit. That was kind of the thing that stuck out. And that was at the end of the, of the saga. And we still had 20 episodes left of Goku literally powering up for a few episodes, which why does it take you f a few episodes to power up? From there, it's kind of just like instantly, oh yeah, I'm like 10 times stronger than you. I'm not a little bit stronger, I'm m like 10 times stronger. Which, okay, that's fair. But the pacing, this is kind of how the pacing has always been. Now in Dragon Ball Super, which is the newest, the pacing is better. It is a bit better. Listen, I'm, I'm, f I'm fine with, let's say, one fight taking 20 episodes. But then we have many other fights between the 20 episodes, right? So it kind of pace it with a show like a minute of Goku versus someone. Kind of switches to someone else fighting. And that takes like 20 episodes before we get the conclusion to go the Goku fight. I'm fine with doing that. But when it's literally just Goku versus Frieza and we have to wait 20 episodes. It's, it's a bit difficult, you know. And going back to the meaningful lifting. The Cell Saga. When Goku sacrificed himself, no one would die. Explode himself, right? Uh, suicide bomb himself. I really, I, like, I, I was shocked when that happened. Because I'm like, oh my god. He's dead? And, oh, yeah, he, he, yeah, here he's, he's back. He's back again. So, I don't, you know, it's one of those things where, this is my opinion. It's my opinion. Now, of course, I could go on and on. I, you know, I don't know. And this is why I think Dragon Ball is overrated. You have a word, overrated. Not overhyped, overrated. Bro, if someone says underrated in the comments, get the fuck out, because it's not underrated. It's overrated by far. It's just nostalgia talking. And if you like the show, think about it this way. If Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball, Kid Goku, or Dragon Ball Z, for example, if one of those two started today, it would not hold up compared to the other animals we have now it would not the only reason why people are like oh this is my favorite i love it is that's your nostalgia talking that's not your common sense talking that's your nostalgia talking is this who i am there's nowhere to go but up on my pedestal